This is All India Radio. In the program spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on Bharat 6G Vision, Telecom Technology to Empower People. The participants are Satya Narayan Gupta, Ex-Principal Advisor, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India and Rajesh Lake, AIR Correspondent. Mr. Gupta, as India embarks upon its own unique uh, 5G journey, the global telecom sector has already initiated strides towards creating 6G or 6th uh, generation communication technology as the next big thing on the communication horizon. So what is the 6G technology and how is it different from 5G technology? Thank you, Rajesh. Actually, you have mentioned about the world is embarking on the 6G technology. Actually, India is almost number one, actually. India is taking the leadership there and pioneership there, and they have already actually come out with the 6G vision, which is also the mission document of the government. The statement there says, design, develop and deploy 6G network technologies that provide ubiquitous, intelligent and secure connectivity for high quality living experience for the world. Actually, we have to start with this. Actually, what the Prime Minister released yesterday was about this and the His mission is that we should develop and deploy 6G technology so that high-quality living experience can be given not only for our countrymen, but for the world, actually. Basically, repeating is uh, that G20 presidentship slogan, one world, one family, one future. So he wants to do whatever he wants to do for his own countrymen. He wants to do that for the world. Basically, just to understand the 6G, and if you are talking about the technologies which will be used, but what it will do beyond 5G. So the 6G converged network, what they call, it will provide textile, internet, health care and education center together and converge, security and trust and hyper-connected digital world, 6G devices which will be IoT, biological devices, next generation industries, AR, VR and XR, holographic communication beyond 3D of course, and teleoperated autonomous driving. These are some of the examples of 6G services which 5G could not promise or could not guarantee. So these are some of the services I mentioned. But main vision, if you take from the document, is about affordable, ubiquitous, and sustainable connectivity. So it has to be affordable. That means cost has to come down. In 5G, cost is very high, actually. And that is why 5G is nowhere affordable. So we have started deploying it, but everyone cannot afford it. Ubiquitous is the main cornerstone of this vision. Ubiquitous means it is all pervasive. It is available everywhere. Like these days, you know, there are some dark spots. There are some areas where nothing is there. In our country, as you know, 35,000 villages don't have even 2G. What to talk of 5G? Connectivity is not ubiquitous. So this policy or this vision statement says it has to be used. That means it should be connecting everywhere or every place and sustainable. That is related to the climate impact. He has mentioned about the SDG goal of UN, that 17 goal. India is a signatory there by 2030. Those goals have to be met. And sustainability is the main thing of all those goals, actually. So these all these things have to be met which 5G was not promising or not sure to meet these goals. So that is about the 6G basically. Okay, so very well explained. And uh, what is the objective of unveiling the Bharat uh, 6G vision document and launching the 6G research and development test bed? Oh yes, that is related actually. Basically, first was the objective of these vision document was that you take a lead and start working on it actually. So when you want to start working on a futuristic thing, first you have to have 
a vision and then you have to have a mission and then you have to have a strategy. And here the Prime Minister wanted India should be pioneer in 6G because every time we used to be told that you have missed the bus. You started late, whether it was 2G, 3G, 4G or even 5G. Though we have started, but some countries of the world are much ahead of us. So here the government led by Prime Minister decided in 6G nobody should say you are late. Actually, we should be the first one. That is why the government decided they set up a task force, about six task forces last year and finally came out with this vision document and that is starting the ball rolling. That means now you have a political will and the government vision and mission and what you, you will like to call a wish list actually and government is there to support you whatever you need. So the work starts with the vision document. And now this vision document has to be converted into the mission and two pages are there of that mission. Page one is from 2023 to 2025 and phase two is from 2025 to 2030. The page one which will be two years, there will be discussion about explosive ideas. They will do crowdsourcing of ideas already. The work has started. Just take risk, develop something, create something actually, co-create something. Set up a apex body, a organization chart, do proof of concept, use cases, create IP. Because if you start early, you can create your own IP, intellectual property, and then you can convert them into essential patent. So you don't have to pay royalty to others. In fact, you can charge the royalty if they use that, like India stack. Actually, in the 5G, we have our own India stack, which is not only working in India, but okay. now other countries want to use it. Like Aadhaar, UPI, these are our own stacks, actually, and we don't have to pay royalty for them, but we can give others either free of cost or charge royalty. And then the test beds also. The actually inauguration of the test bed was a part of phase one of this region, in fact. So test bed means you can experiment, actually, whatever comes to your mind, like R&D labs, and they will be funded by government, like the test beds will be coordinating among the our premier institutes, the IIT. So that is why this was done, actually, because if you want to be leader, you have to start early and communicate to the world and your own experts that we are there to support you. We are giving you freedom to think, experiment, to create, to disrupt. So that is what is the purpose. True. We have to seize the opportunity today and start early. So, yes. uh, Mr. Gupta, is the frequency range uh, of uh, 6G technology be different from what is existing or uh, we will be needing additional spectrum allocation to launch uh, 6G technology? Oh, yes, a great question, Rajesh ji. Actually, as I mentioned, the 6G have to build on whatever 5G have. That means whatever existing infrastructure and that includes spectrum also, it will build on that. So, but it will need much more spectrum than you have given 5G. That is why the vision talks about sub terahertz and terahertz. Terahertz is 1000 times of gigahertz. We are still now talking about gigahertz only and that also up to 60, 90 gigahertz. Now, this policy says you go beyond that, go into terahertz. So much more spectrum will be required because we are talking of ubiquity. We are talking of the six ultras here and there is no shortage of spectrum. Actually, as you go beyond till now, everyone in the world was talking up to 300 gigahertz. So they were nowhere near terahertz. Now this free space optic is coming, the optic communication in the radio in place of electromagnetic waves. And that is what the policy is also mentioning, that you experiment with that. And have a convergence of optic and wireless communication, both. And that is why the more and more spectrum, and not only that, they've also mentioned that existing spectrum have to be basically taken together or maybe reused. And also they are bringing the concept of sharing of spectrum. It is already started a little bit, but sharing of spectrum means it will not be dedicated to one person, one operator or one buyer. So it will be shared and there are, you know, examples of that. So the sharing will increase the efficiency of spectrum. They are talking about terahertz and visual light spectrum. Okay, with 5G technology, Mr. Gupta, the Internet of Things is enabled. 
What are the other additional applications we can have with 6G technology and in what other primary use cases this technology can be used? So yes, actually, as you know, 5G is more or less whatever we can think today. The 5G more or less is promising to enter, though they have not started addressing them like this autonomous car driving, the remote surgery and all those things. But 6G, of course, whatever 5G have not delivered, though it was provisioned, those of course will be taken care of. In addition to that, the vision document in the road chapter is mentioning about tactile internet that will be a intelligent and secured internet. Then health care education center means health and education. Now we are talking of e-health, we are talking of e-education. Everything can be done from the same place actually if you have a good connectivity and 6G connectivity will be providing. And they are talking about hyper-connectivity digital world. Hyper-connected means everything. Every place, Internet of Things means everything, let us say, but every place also is added here. And then 6G devices will be there, not just IoT, but they'll be biological devices, biological which are in your body. It is not just wearable devices which are connected today. A lot of devices in the body will also get connected actually in 6G. And next generation industries, AR, VR is there, but XR will also be there. And holographic communication. Holographic communication is beyond 3D type of communication. It will be actual almost the experience like teleporting. Okay. Suppose you are having video conferencing, you are sitting here. In the 6G kind of holographic communication, you will actually be present at that place also to whom you are talking. Mr. you also uh, mentioned about 6G to be ubiquitous and uh, for it to be present everywhere, it has to be affordable. To what extent can 6G transform the virtual connectivity in villages of India? Oh, yes, that is a great question. The villages are always, actually, what you will call, they are always on the receiving end, whether it was 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, are very good. But 6G especially mentions about ubiquity. Once you mention about ubiquity, then you cannot distinguish between a village or a urban or a city because, as I mentioned, the six ultras are there, high precision, high bandwidth, high performance, high intelligence, massive connectivity, and low energy and cost. Actually, now villages will not be left behind. That is a special purpose and mention. And the last chapter says, Bharat 6G mission. That is where how the things will happen. Especially Bharat means all of the country with more focus on the rural areas. And of course, the cost is always an issue today also. In 6G, there is a special mention that you have to reduce the cost also. How the cost can be reduced? There are two, three ways of reducing the cost. One is develop your own IPR, your own patent. So don't pay royalty. Don't import the equipment. And that is what is the main thing. And in the first phase, the next two years will be that on the R&D, IPR, which government will be funding actually. So once government funds, that is called a sunk cost. So if developing a IPR is funded by government, then no royalty is applicable. Actually, devices or equipment, the major part of the cost is the IPR actually. Rest is silica. Rest is, they say, sand actually. And material cost or input cost of the material is very low. It is all about the IPR or royalty. So if you develop your own and now government wants to fund it, R&D and all these things, so the cost will come down. Mr. Gupta, thank you so much for uh, giving answers uh, so elaborately and uh, delving deep into the 6G mission of the government. Thank you so much for being with All India Radio. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on Bharat 6G vision, telecom technology to empower people. The participants were Satya Narayan Gupta, ex-principal advisor, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, and Rajesh Lake, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on a mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on a YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 92890947. 
फोर